Hey everybody, welcome to the Free Mind Podcast. It's Friday, March 22nd, and we are so excited for the first installment of our expert series. Let's jump right in with Dr. John Bird. Hi, I'm uh, John Bird. I have a PhD in biochemistry from uh, the University of Wisconsin. I got a bachelor's degree from Purdue and a master's and PhD from the University of Wisconsin. That was a long time ago. Uh, I always tell everybody that uh, when I was in graduate school, uh, they, they didn't offer history because there wasn't any. It was so long ago. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm really glad that I became a biochemist because it's been a really satisfying career for me. I worked uh, after I left graduate school, I worked for Miles Laboratories, which was acquired by Bayer a long time ago. And while I was at uh, Bayer, there was a, uh, Miles was the first uh, company that introduced products for people with diabetes. They introduced a urine dipstick for glucose and then a blood test and a meter for that. And they, they were the leader for a short period of time until LifeScan came in and took all the business away with their one-touch uh, uh, glucose system. So anyway, I uh, left Miles and uh, went to California to work for a little startup uh, in the 80s that had a uh, blood, blood allergy testing uh, product, the Mast Immuno Systems. And that's where I learned about the business of uh, medicine because uh, we had a blood allergy test, but we could not get it reimbursed because insurance companies always sent the claims to their uh, allergist who was their consultant and they would always say oh it's experimental it doesn't work blah 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 which was total bogus but anyway that that made me realize how important getting insurance reimbursement is for a product uh so anyway i was there for about uh, from 83 to 87 and i joined a company called quidel in san diego and quidel had uh, products for the home doctor's office and clinical lab and the main products were pregnancy and ovulation tests for home use. And Becton Dickinson was the uh, distributor for that product for us. And that went fine. And then I decided to go off on my own in uh, the late 80s and started a company called Lexan, LXN. And we had a test, home test, it had two tests. It was called the Duet. And it had a glucose test strip. And it also had a test strip for fructosamine, which uh, fructosamine is a, uh, in serum, it gives you your average blood sugar over the previous week or two. The, the test that doctors use is called the A1C test, and that gives you your average over the previous couple of months. But uh, anyway, we raised some money and got the company going and got the product approved by the FDA, cleared by the FDA. Uh, but we ran out of money and ended up selling it to Johnson & Johnson uh, at which point I uh, joined uh, a little startup venture capital firm here in San Diego called Windermere Venture Partners. And we, uh, I was there from 99 to 2004, I guess, or something like that. And during that period, uh, we started about 20 different companies. And when uh, we did uh, put money into a company, we always insisted that one of our partners be involved in the management. And we knew we wanted to do something in diabetes space because it's such a big market and people are eager for new things there. And that's where I found the technology that became Dexcom. And Dexcom means dextrose communication. And that was a technology that came from a little laboratory in Madison, Wisconsin, where I got my PhD, just as an aside. But uh, I always like to say that our first... Uh, uh, our first international headquarters at Dexcom was in the basement of a dentist's office in Madison. <laughs> so I hired a few people from California to come out there, pull the product or technology out of the university. And now it's in here in San Diego and it's got thousands of employees and millions of people using that product. I'm sure you're aware of it. And it's helping millions of people around the world better manage their blood sugar. Uh, well, in 2009, I had a motorcycle accident and I was in a coma for a month and broke my pelvis. So uh, when I woke up, I always tell people that I felt like I'd left Shangri-La because before the accident, I felt like a 30-year-old. And, and I woke up with my broken pelvis and my 
subdural hematoma, I realized uh, I wasn't a young man anymore. So I was kind of into forced retirement for a few years. And then I got really bored with that. And I started looking at some products for the dialysis market. And I would always send them to uh, Dr. Stuart Updike, who's a nephrologist and a co-founder of Dexcom. And whenever I sent them, and they're basically, I would send these dialysis products to, there's only two companies that control that market, Davida and Fresenius. And whenever I sent the idea to them and to Dr. Updike, I'd always get the same response. It'll never, uh, it'll never get reimbursed. Everything's fine. You know, so when I got an email from Dr. Updike. He said, why don't you work on something important like glucose toxicity? And I'd never heard that term before. But now I know I'm an expert. I know exactly what it is. And when I looked at it, I realized uh, that I could uh, help. I solve that problem with glucose toxicity. And what glucose toxicity is, is the, we need glucose every day for the energy that we use. But it's also toxic. It's like a reactive chemical, like cyanide in our blood. And it reacts chemically with all the proteins in our eyes and our nerve endings and our kidneys on our blood vessels everywhere there's a protein glucose wants to react with it to form what's called glycated proteins and i realized that uh, i could i could interfere stop that reaction with lysine so i did a bunch of google research to you know that uh, glycated uh, proteins and stuff and I realized that if I had lysine, it would and put that in the bloodstream, that the glucose could then react with lysine instead of the proteins. And when it reacted with the uh, lysine, it formed glycated lysine, which you just excrete in the urine. And glucose is, you know, our kidneys hold glucose in, they don't let it out. But glycated lysine passes right out. And I did an experiment on myself where I took lysine and I looked at the uh, fructosamine, which is a glycated protein in urine. And sure enough, the levels went way up when I took lysine. So that it did get into my bloodstream and it did react with glucose and excreted it out. But I also realized that I couldn't start a business with just lysine because you can buy lysine at your grocery store or drugstore right now. So I did more research and I looked at other compounds that could be used in a supplement to help with blood sugar. And that's where I came up with the formulation in 2017. And basically the formulation has lysine, zinc, and vitamin C. All three are important. Zinc is important for insulin function and vitamin C is good for many, many things as you and uh, you know, it's a very popular supplement. So anyway, I've uh, contacted my attorney and we filed patents seven of which have now issued. So we have seven patents on Lysulin. And I contacted contract manufacturers and I found one that would make me uh, tablets. And the first, and we launched that product in 2018. It was the fastest product development I've ever been involved with because we didn't have to get FDA clearance. With supplements, the FDA just reviews your labeling and then that's it. So, uh, so it's not FDA cleared or anything, but it's, they've looked over our label. We actually had a problem with the FDA uh, a couple of years ago, and we were on a target for a million in sales until September when we got a warning letter from the FDA that said we were making drug claims. So we reacted to that letter and have changed our labeling. And we now they sent us a letter that said that issue is resolved. So if you go Google, I Lysulin, you might find that FDA warning letter. Well, that's been resolved. But when they sent that letter, immediately Amazon and Walmart.com kicked us off their sites, which was half of our business. So we didn't make a million and we've been, we struggled and we still, uh, we got blackballed basically by Amazon. So we've had to be, go through heroic message methods to get back on that meth heroic, um, method is actually we started a subsidiary company called Delmar Health and renamed the product uh, calling it Enable instead of Lysulin and we changed the 
the label so that we no longer say it's for nutritional supplement for people with diabetes and pre-diabetes. We just say it's useful for helping with blood sugar and insulin function. And that's that met the muster of the FDA. So we're all squared away there. And that was a relief getting the FDA to out of that resolved on our label. So we basically have been, uh, as I said, we started with uh, the tablets and they were big tablets. I mean, they were about that big. So, so we, uh, we basically, uh, once people said that they hated those big horse pills, we came up with a chewable tablet and we now have the Lysolin is available in several forms. It's available as a chewable berry flavored tablet. It tastes pretty good. And, uh, we also have capsules. If you get those tablets or capsules, you have to take six a day, which is a lot. So I came up with a once a day powder, which you just have to take once a day. And it's a little scoop of water and uh, a powder and water. And it tastes like salty lemonade. And we also just launched a uh, weight loss shake that contains lysulin. So you get weight loss and diabetes management all in one. So that's really great. And, uh, in addition, so this is what a, a bottle of Lysolin looks like, and all the all the products are good for a month. And we also sell a home test for A1C, and you can tell if Lysolin is working or not working by using A1C when, before you start. A month later, test yourself again, and your A1C should drop in a month. And we did clinical studies with type two diabetes and pre diabetes and a fabulous study with the pre-diabetes that showed that Lysolin, uh, you know, improved A1C in as little as one month, and it also helped with insulin function. So all of our claims are backed up with the clinical, published clinical studies. And uh, that's that's the story on Lysolin. And I mean, I'm basically struggling. Uh, our sales, I don't have money for our sales force, so we, we do everything online. I've got digital consultants that help me with marketing. But uh, so far, they're not paying paying the bills. So every month, I'm writing checks to keep the company going, and I'm desperate for uh, to find investors as well. And I'm amazed that people that made so much money on Dexcom after it went public, uh, you know, it's valued today at forty billion dollar market cap. So people that invested early made a fortune, but they don't have a shekel to throw my way for either of my new projects, which is disheartening and really painful. So anyway, we're hoping this year to to go to get a million in sales. When we do that, we'll be cash flow positive, EBITDA positive. So we're hoping by the end of the year, we'll be EBITDA positive, and next year for the whole year, we'll be EBITDA positive. So that's the scoop on uh, Lysolin. And I said, Excellent. But, um, just uh, talk to me a little bit about for so for my uh, my personal uh, family is uh, directly. My grandfather has struggled with diabetes his entire life and my uncle had passed away from mis mismanagement of, of diabetes and such. So it's it's definitely a personal thing for me. And that's one of the reasons uh, that I had reached out to you when I had, I had seen what your work was and, and what your story was. Um, so I really appreciate you sharing that and talk a little bit about as a as balancing the science world and the entrepreneur world how how that kind of how that tightrope as management of, of those as a brand manager and owner and founder and inventor how do you manage the business and the science and and all those things together you know well the science has to be there and has to be proven with clinical studies so i've done that uh then the business basically just needs investment so for you know, four years I've been keeping two companies going on my own nickel, and that my, you know my pot's getting pretty close to dry, as my wife reminds me about every other day. So uh, it's really a challenge. I mean, if you start want to start a company, there's really three or four things you need. You need a good idea, and if possible, patents uh, on that idea, uh, and you need to go for a large market, which diabetes has got you know, 30 million people in the United States alone and 300 million worldwide. And you have to have, uh, uh, be able to make it at a reasonable price and sell it. So that's, that's really all you need to start a company. And 
as I said, when I was at Windermere, we started 20 companies and several of them were pretty, like Dexcom, were pretty successful. So obviously some of them weren't. I mean, with startups, uh, you know, oftentimes they just vanish because you, you don't meet your objectives or and or you can't find investors. So, I mean, I'm really, uh, it's really disheartening to me that I can't find investors because I would hate for Lyshland not to to be not available because it's such a great product. It works so well for people to use it. I get these testimonials from people all the time about how happy they are with the product and uh, how grateful they are to have it available to them. Out of curiosity, what what is uh, is it is is the challenge getting the word out to the investors, or are you getting direct feedback uh, from the investors? How how is it that things aren't connecting there as far as that goes? Well, with the with the supplement, I get like basically there's like three or four excuses that they use. One is that they don't have any money, that they're just using their money to keep their current projects alive and going. Second thing is they don't know anything about supplements, so they're concerned about that, that they don't know the business. And the third thing is FDA concerns, and we've taken that one off the list. So, but it's basically they just they all claim that they don't have any money, so they're just keeping it under the mattress. Uh, but I, again, I, I, I know a lot of people in that venture capital world because I've raised myself over a hundred million dollars in the last decade. So it's not like I don't have connections. I have connections, they're just asleep. Yeah, that's, 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 real, that's unfortunate. Uh, what about, um, talk a little bit about Wonder Spray. Oh, I'd love to. Wonder Spray is a, uh, here's the bottle, Dr. Bird's Wonder Spray. And Wonder Spray, I got, uh, when I launched Lysolin, I went to LinkedIn and I, everybody I could find that had diabetes in their profile, I sent them an introduction to the product. And one of the per people that responded who really liked the story was a, uh, uh, a Dr. Mark Hinkes, who's a uh, podiatrist. And he published a little blurb about how I solved the problem of glycated proteins. And during our discussions, he told me about a product called the Ultra Mist, which is a uh, little handheld wand that uses ultrasound to generate uh, uh, a mist that you spray on a, a wound and it kills bacteria. And from my days in graduate school, I knew we used ultrasound to open up bacterial cell walls. <clears throat> so I uh, contacted the manufacturer, and the CEO there was a Russian engineer. And I said, how much does this Ultra Mist product cost? And he said, $30,000. And I said, oh, no wonder nobody knows about it. I said, how about you and I make a hand, a little miniature uh, nebulizer and use uh, use it with ultrasound to generate a mist and kill bacteria and help a lot of people to better health. And he said, no, I have no interest. I've got 50 patents and it would cost too much money. I said, okay, fine. Well, a week or two later, he emailed me and said, for three and a half million dollars, I'll give you non-exclusive rights to one of my patents. I said, well, I don't have three and a half million dollars, so that's out. But how about, I'll pay for the development of a prototype. We both sell it and we'll pay you your three and a half million on royalties of sales. He says, no, nah, I'm not interested. I never heard of anybody using royalties to pay for a license, which is what everybody uses to pay for a license. So he was just out to lunch. So I went to, uh, from there I went to uh, uh, Alibaba and I'm looking for my little nebulizer. I found a little nebulizer on Alibaba there, here it is. And I sent this little nebulizer up to a bacteriology lab in Orange County and said, use saline and see if it kills gram positive and negative bacteria. Well, two weeks later, I got some bad news and some good news. The bad news was they said it didn't kill anything. It's just too weak. Uh, the, the ultrasound is too weak. So I said, that's oh, too bad. But the same day, I got an email from a wound healing group that I belong to as was an introduction to HOCL, hypochlorous acid. 
as it turns out, HOCL that's a very uh, is is the is the compound that our white blood cells use to kill all germs, bacteria, virus, yeast, mold, and fungus. It kills COVID nineteen, HIV, you name it, it kills it, and it's totally safe and non toxic. We all have it in our bloodstream right now. So I contacted some manufacturers and I ordered some and I sent some back to the uh, lab up in Orange County and I said, here, try this and see if it, it kills anything. Well, a week later, they said in less than 15 seconds, it's 100 percent knockout of everything we've tested. So I contacted the manufacturer and I said, how do you sell this product? And they said, well, we sell through McKesson primarily to doctors. And I said, well, there's a beating your head against the wall. I said, how about if uh, if I sign up to sell it direct to consumers? And they said, okay. So we signed an agreement and that's where how Wonder Spray began. So now we have Wonder Spray. It's available in uh, little two ounce bottles and eight ounce bottles. Uh, but we also sell the nebulizer. Let's see if I can get it going. Yeah, can you see it? Mm-hmm, yep. It's going there. So you can actually use that to get it down into your lungs. Uh, and we also sell uh, uh, fogger, which you can put Wonder Spray in to fog the room to disinfect it. It's a really great disinfectant and deodorizer. So if something stinks, it's because there's bacteria around. So uh, basically, uh, it's also actually great for allergy symptoms, as it turns out. It uh, stops mast cell degranulation, which is releases histamine, which is why you have to take antihistamines. So it just it's good for so many things. People can't believe it. The good news is it's good for so many things. The bad news is nobody can believe it's good for so many things. But there again, so I launched that in t- a year after I launched Lysolin, and we've been selling that again through uh, digital consultants and. Uh, Lysolin, I didn't mention, is available now at CVS and uh, Walmart, as well as on uh, their websites. And uh, Wonder Spray is uh, available through our primarily through our website. It's called uh, DrBirdWonderSpray.com. It's funny if you put if you Google Wonder Spray, it takes you to they got the domain name. So when I started the company, I, I got the one. Uh, domain I got was thewonderspray.com because Wonder Spray was taken and it was taken by a company that sells a port a little handheld bidet so uh, <laughs> it's funny because in their videos they've got a guy like you uh, with a full beard eating cake and stuff and he says you know you can't get this off just by wiping it with paper so it shows him using that bidet like thing to get killed get the cake off of his face but uh uh, Wonder Spray does a much better job at deodorizing and disinfecting than anything else. So, and again, I can't find investors for it, but it's uh, basically the company is just me and a, a warehouse person to help me d- just, you know, take orders and stuff. It's available on Amazon and Walmart.com as well. But uh, there again, I'm just struggling to find customers and investors. So, that's Are you the digital- your uh, digital consultants are are your digital consultants pro- provide generating leads and making how are they going about promoting your product for you digitally they all make the same huge claims about all the things they're going to do for you and they cost a fortune like uh, a couple of years ago i spent almost three hundred thousand dollars on this group and they didn't sell a single bottle they recommended we change the name from Wonder Spray to Dr. Bird's Wonder Spray. So we did that. So uh, maybe that'll help. I don't know. People like to see a doctor involved, even though I'm not a PhD or not an MD, I'm a PhD. So uh, again, we have great testimonials and great word of mouth people telling people about it. And that's, uh, you'd like, I wish it would just would grow faster. So hopefully this you know, these podcasts like this will help. Talk a little bit about the, I want to kind of step inside your brain a little bit because of of the amount of, of things that have churned through there, the amount of innovations, the amount of creative things that have gone through your balance of creativity and science. Talk about your internal process and how you go from, uh, let's say the, the napkin bar napkin concept all the way through your trial and error and running through the science and running through the, the trials 
until the execution. What, what Walk me through uh, what it's like to be in your shoes. Yeah, I think I, I sent you a uh, link to my book, which mm -hmm. is uh, Lysolin, which is uh, the natural solution to the diabetes epidemic, the discovery of Lysolin. So a lot of that detail is in there about how that came about. But uh, basically, I just look looking to find, you know, big ideas that uh, for big markets that have patents. And it, I actually, another guy that I met on LinkedIn has a company like Dexcom. It's called Alert G A L E R T G Y, and they've got a, a non-invasive, uh, like a wrist band that uh, uses radio wave technology and dielectric spectroscopy to measure glucose in your bloodstream. And there again, they're just struggling because they can't find investors, which is amazing because we all know what a big market that continuous glucose marketing uh, market is. So uh, I actually invested a little bit of money in his company a couple of years ago. I went down to visit him in Florida and we ran, he had a prototype at that point and we ran a glucose tracking study on me and compared it to a blood finger stick and the, the, it correlated pretty well. So I said, yeah, it looks like you're off to the races. I'll put a little bit of money in <clears throat> and I was on the board there, but they've gone through board grief and, you know, whenever things don't go perfectly, the board, you know what the first thing the board does, right? Fire the CEO. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what, uh, that, and I'm used to wearing the hat of the development guy. And once we get to market, have somebody that knows how to market products take over. And both of my companies, I'd be happy to have somebody come in and acquire them. And since we have so little revenue, I wouldn't probably get my money back. But nonetheless, I'm just interested in keeping these products alive because they're such useful products. So, you know, wonder spray kills COVID-19, but did you know that? I Nobody did not know that. Does. So... When you are setting up these different things and walk me through kind of currently what you're doing now currently, you're out of the, you're out of the startup, the, the, the phasing of conceiving these products. Now it's the executing and the growing. What's a daily process now with cultivation and management of the businesses? I assume you have multiple entities and they're all under one. Well, basically every day for me is I first thing I do is get on my computer and answer about uh, 20 emails from people wanting to sell me SEO and <laughs> want to redesign my website and all that. So I get rid of all those. <clears throat> and then every once in a while, I find somebody like you that may actually be able to help me. And I've done several of these podcast type interviews. So, and oftentimes they lead to uh, sales. So again, I spend time talking to customers and talking to my CFO, who's also the chief operating officer. He's a great guy. We've worked together in the past. And he basically, like he's the one that got the CVS deal and the Walmart deal put together. So he did a great job on that. And we're, uh, we're in 750 CVS stores and I hope we can get into all you know, thousands of them in the United States. I've also got another consultant helping me get into Canada and hopefully next month, April, I expect to get an order from Rexall up in a drugstore up in Canada. So they used to be in the United States, but I guess they're just now in Canada. And McKesson actually owns them. So McKesson does distribution to several businesses there. So I'm hoping it'll lead to some serious sales uh, coming soon this year. Yeah, it's uh, so Dor during uh, during COVID, uh, I uh, I had to pivot from my traditional sales in alcohol and food and beverage uh, when all the contracts died. Exactly, uh, we're sitting here now, March fifteenth, twenty twenty four. It was exactly however many years ago today we got the phone calls that all the bars uh, closed, so my whole business was to zero. And overnight, I uh, pivoted with the distillery down the street, and we started commercially under the World Health Organization, commercially producing uh, hand sanitizer in the beginning which uh, very quickly, within 30 days, we did all the webinars and certifications, learned everything. So then we said 250 gallon totes shipped in of pure, uh, pure 200 proof uh, ethanol. And we were popping and making all the things through. And we had a chemical company come in to sign off on our formula. 
So uh, I had a very amateur style 30 uh, day uh, run through the fire <laughs> of trial and error. And uh, what I can say is it then led into um, me realizing that my life wasn't just in alcohol and uh, I had more that I could offer the world. And I quickly during that 30 day period of us producing that, creating the business and then literally distributing it nationally, uh, it spawned off into an entire PPE uh, portfolio for myself of testing of the testing, the gloves, the masks, and everything like that. Uh, so I ended up funding uh, the state of Delaware uh, during COVID with all the necessities that they needed, as well as a healthcare network up in Montana and a few other ones around the area. So I overnight had to learn uh, basically cold calling uh, pharmacies around the country. So, uh, well, How so does that uh, work? Because you can't get a pharmacist to talk to you. So that's uh, that's where my creativity came in. And uh, I can tell you what, uh, when it, it was the hardest out of all my years of uh, selling into liquor stores and bars and restaurants, I thought they were tough and uh, pharmacists were very hard to get a hold of. But just like what you're saying here, once they realized uh, that I had a brain in my head and I was actually there to help them and to, that we were going to together, uh, you know, work on this, uh, the phone calls never stopped. And it was a good two year run of just absolute chaos and uh, being, selling ethanol. I sold, I sold, uh, yeah, I sold uh, the sanitizer, gloves, masks, and everything uh, all remotely. So I literally was in my basement and I was just dialing 250 calls a day every day. I had email. I was doing the I was while I was doing copy and paste on the emails, and I was just introducing myself to hundreds of people a day. Wow. And I was just so so. The goal was just whatever happens, happens. And because uh, I was self-employed and I didn't fall into any of that PPP money either. So uh, I, I had I had no option. I have kids and, and a house yeah. and everything like that. Kind of like let's with all everything you've been doing over over the past few years. What would you say is a is kind of a advice for younger entrepreneurs that are just getting started in the science world that maybe they want a patent and they want to have a business in this within the world of science and healthcare. Would you say your number one recommendation is understanding the financial piece and how much money it takes to get through that? Is that kind of, or what would you say overall is kind of things to really, the real, like slap them in the face with reality for a second kind of thing? Yeah. Well, again, it's just find a unique product that goes to a big market and try to line up some investors. And again, you know, I don't come from a wealthy family, so I don't have friends and uh, family that have a lot of money. I mean, I've got one friend that I've worked with at Quidel that put some money into Lichland in the beginning. And I had hoped that he would be able to help me because he's also raised a lot of money for startups, but he couldn't find anybody to, to help with that either. So, uh, so anyway, if you can line up, just know that it's going to cost, you know, a lot, as you know, from your experience, it costs a lot of money to get the product made and find customers and ship it and package it and ship it to them so it's not cheap so as, as far as the last question i have for you uh the last question john is uh, as far as the future holds kind of with all your experience in the current and the past where do you see these emerging technologies and things like that uh do you see things getting accelerated kind of what is your vision of the next five to ten years and 15 years and beyond kind of, I know it's a loaded question, but choose whichever kind of bracket of timeline. Yeah. Well, I, I keep hoping that uh, the government, people in the government would wake up to the fact that type two diabetes is a uh, lifestyle disease. You know, type one diabetes is an autoimmune disease. And you know, there's not much you can do about that other than manage it with the continuous glucose monitor and low carb diet. But type 2 diabetes, we could wipe that off the face of the earth if people would just get off that stupid uh, meal pyramid that the government publishes, it continues to publish that, you know, recommends high carb, low fat diet, it's just upside down. If you want to get rid of diabetes, get, get low carb, high protein, high fat diet will do it. And again, uh, with a supplement like Lysolin that will help you. And with a home test for A1C, you can tell how well you're doing. And people often ask, well, will I have to, will I have to take Lysolin for the rest of my life? And I always say, well, no, if you actually get down your A1C down to normal levels, like in the low fives, uh, you can actually go from three servings a day to two servings a day. And if it still stays down, as you can tell by measuring A1C, if it stays down, go from two to one, and eventually go from 
one to zero and and just keep monitoring your a1c and if it starts to creep up start lysolin again so that's also good whereas insulin once you start on insulin you're on a one-way street to drug addiction because you're becoming insulin addict where it takes more and more and it works less and less well because of the fact that uh, the glucose in your blood doesn't it, it doesn't work as well so i don't know what's gonna you never know what's gonna bring i mean who would have predicted that the internet would change our, our life so dramatically other than al gore i guess he knew but uh, uh but uh what what else is there going to be it's like uh that's the other thing about money raising there seem to be a lot of money out there for apps but not for products like i have so you never know what's gonna what the future will bring i just hope it brings better health and longer life to uh humanity so well, excellent. Well, th John, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate you carving out the time. Um, any other, uh, anything else you, you would like to share with the, with their audience? No, if they, uh, my email is jbird at jfbird.com. And if people get a hold of me, I'd be happy to send samples of Lysol and Wonder Spray to people if they want to try it. Uh, I'd rather have it in people's hands and sitting in a warehouse. So here, thank you very much for, for your time. And uh, I'll be in touch in the next hour here. Thanks, Nate. I really appreciate your help. You take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Transform your weight loss management with Lysolin. Discover the natural way to maintain healthy blood sugar levels and support your body's insulin function. Say goodbye to worries and hello to a healthier new with Lysolin. Try it now.